Good morning and happy hump day, everybody. It's hump day. Okay, so um, let's see. What's my low, my high, my act of kindness? Um, hmm. Well, actually, you know, my low is the fact that, like, since yesterday, I've been trying to see this one movie I really want to see in the theater. It'd be the first time. It would, seriously, it would be the first movie I would see in the theater since before the pandemic started. Okay? And for like me, I can't find a theater near me where they're showing this movie. So I don't want to talk, so I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But my high is, you know, some of the usual stuff. Been watching some, uh, you know, Charlie Conway playing Black 2 and White 2. Especially considering that. <laughs> Okay, you know, I'll get to that also in a second. But, you know, some family time with my mom and dad. My mom actually, my mom just barely had the energy after watching my nephews all day to make burgers for dinner. And not just any burgers, Lipton onion soup burgers. Mmm, Lipton onion soup burgers. Alright, um, for the, for the record, when you do this, that's actually the sound that's, uh, Dan Castle and Nana makes were for Homer drooling. Yeah, so those of you who don't know, uh, the, the, uh, Homer Simpson is voiced by a man named Dan Castle and Nana, which is a very musical name, by the way. Um, <laughs> so, my act of kindness was I helped my mom watch my nephews for a little bit. Well, Here's the thing, I watched it for like a little bit, but for whatever reason, I was just feeling so drowsy, like I took a nap. I can't lie, I did take a nap. One of my nephews, I could hear him just before I dozed off. He's like, Uncle Nick, no fall asleep. <laughs> Sorry, little bro, but I totally fell asleep. Oh gosh. That's eh, fine. I mean, look, the fact that I'm even in the same room with my nephews really is a blessing in disguise. Trust me, I know I made my choices when the pandemic began and I keep I keep trying to tell myself, those boys, those boys, choose those boys. I did. And days like yesterday only prove that even if not much happens, it's still a blessing. So I'm okay with that. So let's talk about the things I was going to talk about. So First of all, a little, little bit about Charlie Conroy. Um, so I've been blast watching him, as you would expect. But remember when I said Charlie Conroy is going to be doing everything there is to do in Black 2 and White 2? I'm being dead serious. Because when I say he's doing stuff that I certainly didn't do back when I played it, He's doing stuff that's people that personally I thought wasn't even available anymore. See the way that um, the Nintendo DS worked back in the day when Nintendo was actually making them is when it came to Pokemon, they developed the way you can trade online, you know, online Wi-Fi and stuff like that. I mean, for a device of that, for a device of this kind of counter to trade with, say. Like, say you live in the city of New York, and you're trading from someone who lives in Los Angeles. If you two know each other, you have the right friend codes, you can trade. And, obviously, the Wi-Fi should be pretty solid overall. Actually, you know, in New York and Los Angeles may not have been a very good example. There's a three-hour time difference. Um, let's say from, like, here in Elmira to, I don't know, somebody like horse heads. Definitely much closer, but definitely at least the same time zone. Where online you can trade and all sorts of other stuff. Game Freak, the people behind Pokemon, actually developed a lot of neat things you could do as time went on. In terms of what you could do online. Earn different kinds of achievements. Earn different kinds of Pokemon you could get. Um, you name it. Needless to say... When Nintendo is no longer going to make the Nintendo DS, or the Nintendo 3DS for that matter, I 
personally believe that this is stuff that you're never going to see ever again for the, the Nintendo DS. I mean, that's obviously one of the main reasons why Nintendo developed the Switch. They wanted to create a, a video game system where you can play on your TV, but also take on the go with you. Which really is good. But there's a lot of stuff involved that I don't think most people even thought of when they first got their Nintendo Switch. Because ever since Sword and Shield, well actually, ever since uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, every main series Pokemon game has been on the Switch. All of which has met with, all of which has been met with great success. Because as long as there are Pokemon fans out there, you're gonna get people to buy. You're gonna get people who want to buy all the DLC, you know, and so on and so forth. I mean, yeah, I remember when the Crown Town. I remember when both the Isle of Arma, Arma, Armor, Isle of Armor, and the Crown Tundra were first announced. You know, Pokemon had a DLC. No one's gonna buy. Yeah, everybody bought it. And it looks like there's going to be um, uh, two more DLC um, packs available in the coming months for uh, Scarlet and Violet. The first one's going to be the Teal Mask, and the other one is going to be um, the Indigo Disc, I think is what it is. But the point is, like, Pokemon doing stuff online isn't going anywhere. However, if you're playing an old game, like, say, Black 2 and White 2, it can be kind of difficult to actually get some of that. If you want to do some of those things, it's kind of hard to do. Because some of these modes and functions aren't available anymore. And for one thing, it kind of makes me look back and like, wow, am I old? Because I never really used any of that stuff, but I remember when it was there. And for those die-hard Pokemon fans who knew what they wanted to do with it, like, I'm sure it was probably great memories for all of them. But that Sugar Conroy, that guy found a way to do some stuff that never even occurred to me to do back then. And keep in mind, all he just did was unlock his first badge. And there's a ton of, and you know, just like in most RPGs, you, you, for every achieve, every major achievement you do, stuff unlocks. You know, new Pokemon are available, for instance. You can buy new items at the store. You know, some NPCs had different conversations with you. You know, Pokemon's always worth the gamble with stuff like that. What fascinates me the most is... He's four videos in, and so far he's already doing a great job of showing everything that you could possibly do. Not all in one video, mind you. I mean, listen, there's only so much you can put in a video in terms of like editing and, you know, filming editing, um, like practicing, like what you're going to do before you start recording. Like, there's a lot that goes into an LP that, quite frankly, I don't really know how to do myself. I do know that I'm having a lot of fun watching it though. So right now it really is starting to look like, yeah, it's going to be December of this year by the time he's done. If he's done any sooner than that, it will shock me. Watch, I say this now. The final Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 related video that he does will premiere on November 30th of this year. I'm like, oh, I missed it. So, yeah, again, I'm sorry I made a huge Pokemon there, guys. I'm really sorry. I know, it's, you know, I like Pokemon, I do. I mean, I play it so much anymore, but I've always had a respect and appreciation for it. Even before I knew what Pokemon, even before, seriously, believe it or not, there was a time where I struggled to name just 20 Pokemon. And now, I mean, okay, I couldn't name all, at least, I mean, if, I, mean uh, uh, I can't even speak right now. 
I'm at least at the point where if I saw a Pokemon, I can almost tell you what it's called. Come to think of it, there's actually some Pokemon whose Pokedex numbers I remember. You know, Pikachu is 25, I believe. Bulbasaur is 1, Charizard is 4, Squirtle is 8. Gengar is 96. Man, who doesn't love Gengar, man? Yeah. Um, Gengar is cool. Okay, so let's talk about the movie that I really want to see. But for the life of me, no movie theater near me is showing this, is showing it. And it's really upsetting me. Because I want to see it. Like, seriously, this might be the movie to get me out of like, okay, you know what? I'm no longer going to be in this rut. I'm going to go see this movie in the theater. First movie I've seen since Onward in the theater. I, I want to go see it, right? And if you've seen any trailers for this movie, and don't worry, I'll put a link to the trailer in the description down below, then you know exactly why I want to see it. The movie is called Caesar. Although every time you hear the, uh, every time you watch the trailer, it's like, Caesar! Like, like, like that. It's really funny. And... Basically, from what it looks like, it looks like it takes near the end of World War II, where, like, this, where, like, you don't know what much of what's going on, but the one thing that the marketing has really been trying to push, and again, it's the reason why I want to see this movie, is the dog. Like, there are scenes of, like, in the trailer, where you see, like, critics are saying, like, if the dog, as long as the dog lives, we're in it. Or, I hope the dog doesn't die. Or, basically everything is surrounding the dog, right? And then, like, they announce in the trailer, Don't worry, the dog lives. I'm like... <laughs> I'm so happy, the dog lives. Or it makes me wonder, like, seriously, this trailer alone is doing a great job of the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why. In terms of that dog living. But the question is, how does this dog live? Seriously, there's like one shot in the trailer where like there are machine guns firing at this dog and the dog is dodging every bullet. Like, I wanna see this dog live, man. I wanna see like, I don't care what. Although watch, like everyone's gonna go to the movie, to, to go to the theater to see this movie just for the sake of the dog, right? And the dog may only be in like a handful of scenes. I can so totally see that happening. I mean, either way, I really would get a good laugh out of it. Because let's say that I'm right and you know, they don't really show the dog as much as the trailer makes you think they're going to show the dog. Look, I was, like, that's literally them trolling me and duping me. Like, I'll respect a good prank, right? Because at its core, that really is a prank. A very elaborate prank. Multi-million dollar prank, actually. You know, because a movie makes me a million dollars, takes millions of dollars to make, obviously. But let's say that I'm right, and they show the dog, like, use, like, 95% of the movie is the dog. I'm still going to be laughing, because, again... The, the trailer alone does a great job of the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why. But how is that dog going to live? Seriously, like, is the dog going to... Oh my gosh. I wonder if the dog is going to pull off a Lonely Island. For those of you who don't know, the Lonely Island is a band led by Andy Samberg. And one of the most famous songs is, Cool guys don't look at explosions. They just said, cool, and walk away. I want to see if the dog does that. I want to see if the cute little puppy does that. Like, cool dogs don't look at explosions. They just bark and walk away. <laughs> I want to see that so much. Okay, oh, it's no secret that kitties and puppies are a weakness of mine. I see a cute little kitty or cute little puppy. Kitty or puppy. Ah, kitty or puppy. Ah, no. I, I love that, man. Seriously, I, I feel as I've gotten older and been more 
you know, open with my feelings, thank you, therapy. Seriously, go to therapy. If you need someone to talk to, please go to therapy. It really is the best thing for you. Well, okay, not the best thing for you per se, but it definitely helped a lot with me. So if, you ever, if you've never gone to therapy and you really need someone to talk to, go to therapy. I'm gonna say about that. But I've really been open to more, uh, to, to be more open about being accepting of, you know, letting go of my feelings, accepting of others, you know, acting. Okay, I'll get to, there's one thing I definitely wanna say about that in a second. But one thing is, I've really been open about how much I love adorable little animals. <laughs> I do, man. Just again, cute little kitty, cute little puppy, or bunny. I need to think of another animal that ends in Y. That doesn't end in Y. Actually, wow. I mean, <laughs> I was just saying, or a pony. Actually, I'm a little big to ride a pony. Or a horsey. Ooh, a horsey. I'd ride a horsey. Horsies are cool. Yeah. Ooh, actually, the only, honestly, for me, the only reason why I'd ever want to ride on a horse is if, like, I'm also wearing a suit of armor. Not for jousting, just for, like, yeah, I want to do that. I totally want to do that. See, this is what cute animals do to me. It brings out the, the, the funny, nice, sort of well-being kind of person in me. Because it's cute little animals, guys. I mean, seriously, who doesn't love cute animals? Cute animals are awesome. And that's why I want to see Caesar. I want to see how that dog lives. I want to see that dog pull off a cool guys don't look at explosions. Actually, in this case, it would be cool dogs don't look at explosions. And you know what? If for whatever reason the dog is fighting the bad guy, I want to see that dog fight somebody. Please. I do. Hey, listen. I love cute animals. I know not to disrespect them, though. So you disrespect an animal, it will literally come back to bite you. Probably. But, yes. My goal is sound. Like, you know what? People of Horses and Elmira and Big Flats and Corny, we got to get the movie Sisu in our area. I want to see Sisu, please. If I ever do see Sisu, give myself some popcorn and drink, give myself some candy, and then I'm going, then I'm going in, like guns blazing. Of course, the guns will be not pointed at the dog. Seriously, Sisu's done a really great. The trailers of Sisu did a really great job of showing that like this is like a certified safe for animals. Which is a prospect that I greatly support. Animals are cute. Seriously, don't hurt animals, guys. Oh, okay, well, I shouldn't say that because some people, you know, hunt for food and stuff. But then, like, for food, you know, that's fine. But if it's like a cute little animal that is like no, that's like not remotely mean or would only really want nothing but affection from you, don't be cruel. Be kind to animals, please. Thank you. I hope you liked this video. If you did like and subscribe to the channel, follow me on social media. As always, I am very humble to make this video for all of you guys watching Joe for the name. Hope we have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. And I hope we get to see you in this area. And remember, if you guys want to talk to me, you need to lend me all the way back. Take care and make good choices. 607 all day, baby.